Good afternoon and welcome to the launch of the British Medical Journal Special Collection uh, on the solutions of addressing non-communicable diseases and um, global and regional level. And before we will start, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Dr. Svetlana Axelrod. I'm a director of the UN Interagency Task Force and the Global Coordination Mechanism in the World Health Organization. And today we have a very distinguished panelist. Unfortunately, we have very limited time, 15 minutes, but I think it's a really a great opportunity for us to make this presentation and launch of this uh, special edition on the non-communicable diseases. So uh, this is the BMG special NCD uh, collection is collaborative efforts of the WHO and BMG. And it was different experts, especially from the WHO, from the UN agencies, from the academia and civil society. And this is the special edition uh, is still in the process and development and we hope that very soon we will have a big launch of this uh, special edition on non-communicable diseases. So today uh, we have three panelists in our discussion and I think it's a great moment to thank the sponsorship of this uh, special edition and I'm very happy that I could say it to Erika, to the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, also for the International Federation for Pharmaceutical Manufacturers and Associations, to the DEFEAT and CDs, to the Russian Federation. So uh, let us quickly move to the first speaker and I would like to give the floor to Dr. Kamra, Kamran Abbasi, the executive editor of BMG, and he will uh, introduce the NCD collection and tell us why uh, he thought this type of publication was needed and what kind of articles and editions included. So, Cameron, the floor is yours. Hello? Yes, good evening, uh, good afternoon, and thank you very much, Svetlana. My name is Cameron Abassi, I'm executive editor of the BMJ. And we're delighted to um, work with WHO and partners on this special collection on NCDs. It's really been a wonderful exercise, and I'm very grateful to uh, Bente Mickelson, who kicked all of this off for us uh, back in 2018 now. So we've been working on this for a very long time, and to Tia in particular, who's worked with us very uh, diligently and had to put up with the letters she's received from the BMJ and been very, very responsive and very good humored uh, in dealing with, um, with our communications. Now you asked me why we're interested in this. Well today we publish an editorial in the BMJ by, by you Swetlana and other members of your editorial group, your NCD expert editorial group and there are some st statistics in that editorial and I'm going to quote four of them. 71%, and you'll all be familiar with this, but it's worth repeating, 71% of all cause mortality worldwide uh, is because of NCDs. 15 million people a year uh, die prematurely because of NCDs. 75% of deaths from, MC from NCDs are in low and middle income countries, and 85% of premature deaths are in low and middle income countries. That's why, that's reason enough for this issue to be fundamental, to be important to the BMJ, to our readers, to ministers, to policy makers, to clinicians, civil society and patients. And that's why we wanted to work with you to make this happen. Now the other great attribute of this whole collection is a very BMJ flavor, which is that we like to cover things from every possible angle, from many different perspectives. And this particular collection has many different uh, articles covering different themes. So I'm going to get, list some of them to give you a flavor. We talk about national action plans. We talk about social determinants. We talk about mental health and the environment. We talk about food, primary care. We talk about the evidence, the economic evidence and the implementation research that's required. We talk about medical education and we also look at NCDs in humanitarian settings. So if you're looking 
to develop strategies, to develop solutions on NCDs, this is a very rich resource for you to engage with because we talk about the national, the regional, and the global level. We take a multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholder perspective. But the two major, major overriding themes of this collection are one, integration, and number two, the biggest of all, because it's very easy when we talk about issues, when we publish about them, when we appear on TV and radio about them, to talk about the problems. It's much harder to talk about the solutions. And the focus, unashamedly, the focus of this collection is about the solutions to prevention and control of NCDs, and I urge you to take a look. There are more solutions and more articles to follow, but if you go to the BMJ's website today, you will see 13 articles already published. So that's a great achievement. It's great that we work with WHO. It's great that we worked with WHO's expert editorial group. It's wonderful that we've had experts from civil society and ac academia work with us from around the world. And very importantly, there is a very, very good global and gender representation in this collection of articles. And for that, I give credit to the, to the team we've worked with at WHO. And I'm, I'm confident that this collection will begin to help us achieve the targets we need to achieve to, to, to deliver the SDGs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cameron. Really, thank you. You have uh, raised very important numbers of NCDs. And of course, you underline this is the important role of collaboration and different stakeholders' engagement. But let me turn to our next uh, invited guest, Mr. Greg Perry, who is the Assistant Director General of the International Federation of Pharmaceutical Manufacturers and Associations. And you are, uh, and, and may I ask you the question, how and why do you think it is important to support this kind of project? Why it is important to have this kind of collaboration that was previously said by the first speaker? Why it is important to have engagement of different stakeholders such as the member states, academia, civil society, and non-state actors, and of course private sector? Please. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here. And uh, IFPMA is indeed very happy to be a sponsor. Um, I had a set reply, but in fact, I'm going to reply to what you said, because I think when you said here that your response is national, regional, global, multi-sectorial, and based on solutions, I think sums it up. I mean, if that's the focus, um, which is the focus of this series in NCDs, that exactly the right approach. And I think what's very important is that if you see what press articles write about, what we, what we see text, what we see put on social media, they're often based on some form of peer-reviewed article. Um, and it's very important that we have more of these peer-reviewed articles based on evidence, based on solutions, and I should say also sustainable solutions. So that's why we very much welcome um, partnering and sponsoring with yourselves. And um, indeed, the BGMA, great read. I don't say that just because I'm British, yeah? <laughs> but it really is, worth, really is worth a great read. And as I said, the more uh, that we have on social media based on, on evidence is very important. Um, I think picking up on your, your other issue, the multi-stakeholder approach, the fact is no one can do anything on their own, particularly in this area. The pharmaceutical industry certainly can't do everything on its own. We have responsibilities around innovation, around affordability, but there's a whole holistic approach, a whole health systems that goes with it. All of this has to be combined. And if articles are reflecting that multi-sectorial approach, that's very, very important. And related to that, of course, is collaboration. We all have to collaborate together in order to defeat NCDs. The final point I want to make is, is, is slightly maybe a little bit uh, off key, but it's to do with financing, yeah, and uh, the importance of financing of NCDs and all the financing that we have to have around health system strengthening, etc. And I think a key point here, and I'm just making this, is the link between the health side 
and the financial side within governments. So when we're looking at collaboration, this collaboration between all of us, but the key collaboration is between the finance ministers and the health ministers, because until we can get those two on the same page, half our work will not be achieved. So congratulations. Thank you very much for this really important issue. I want to take this opportunity and to invite our distinguished also guest that uh, we have a very productive collaboration and please, please take this chair. I want to share it with you. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Professor C Sir Michael Marmut is today with us and I'm really very happy to congratulate you with this award that the uh, hero, uh, hero of the of the uh, global health and it's a really great opportunity to work and you are also one of the authors of this and editors of this uh, BMG. So may, uh, <laughs> we are ladies, we always give the floor to men. So may I ask you, <laughs> may I ask you also uh, to give your vision, how do you think in the future we should focus on the NCDs and especially on the social determinants, please. Well, thank you. And this unscheduled appearance here, I'm very pleased. I just did an interview with the UN Foundation about health. And at the end, they wanted to take a picture of me with a placard with SDG 3. And I asked if we could do it with SDG 1 and 10. So I held all three placards, reduce poverty, reduce inequality, and improve health. If we, I've said a bit melodramatically, perhaps, thinking about childhood obesity, if we want to solve the childhood obesity problem, we have to solve the inequality problem. Because childhood obesity follows the social gradient, and certainly in a country like the United Kingdom, the rise in childhood obesity has stopped in children from higher income groups, but childhood obesity is continuing to rise in children from less advantaged backgrounds, so the inequalities are increasing. Well, that will feed through into inequalities in diabetes, in cardiovascular disease, in cancer, in arthritis, and it all starts with inequalities in childhood. So I come back to my three SDGs, poverty, inequality, and health. We need to link them. But that's not just rhetoric. We've got good evidence now of what we need to do to make a difference. We're going to work with our Swiss partners at improving the quality of that evidence globally and what we can do to use that evidence to change policy. And I'm particularly pleased uh, to have this award because it, my mind, represents using the best evidence on social determinants of health to create health equity. And it applies to NCDs as much as it does to any other aspect of health and well-being. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Let me quickly go to Erica and ask. Uh, uh, Erica is the deputy head of Global Program House of the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. And Erica, we spoke a lot of today about the evidence. My question is about evidence, how it is important and why it is, should be important. Well, so talking about uh, after Michael, it's, <laughs> it's so difficult and uh, I already experienced this two times over the last uh, two years. So first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, uh, Svetlana and uh, the organizers for inviting uh, SDC and Switzerland on the panel. And uh, just to say that we were very happy to uh, support uh, the open access uh, publication of the, this BMG special uh, series and to be a member of the, the expert editorial, editorial advisory board. 
uh, indeed, uh, SDC approach to fighting uh, NCDs uh, tackles all, the, all issues which are addressed by the series, as just mentioned by, uh, by Cameron. First of all, it tries to uh, develop, to promote an, uh, a new narrative, I would say, on, on NCDs by highlighting the cost of inaction, for example, versus the cost of action. And also, um, it tries to develop a comprehensive investment framework for NCDs. So that's what we use as a bilateral donor to advance the, the agenda. We use evidence, and we use this evidence to build the case for investment in addressing NCDs. And then um, it also uses and builds on the global policy framework. It's, it's very important to understand uh, the interconnected nature of SDG, SDGs, just as uh, uh, Michael just uh, uh, mentioned now. And then thirdly, it highlights the importance of carrying out a strong policy, influencing and advocacy work. So it's not just about evidence. We use this evidence and uh, to increase, for example, cooperation between major international institutions to foster uh, uh, strength and a stronger donor alignment, political commitment to address NCDs, advocate for prevention, control, and treatment to be part of UHC packages. This is very important to support governments in uh, efficiently use the domestic resources and to reallocate resources that are, that are to reshape the entire uh, financial landscape around NCDs based on evidence. And, uh, of course, uh, engagement with the private sector. Here again, uh, evidences are key. Taking a whole society approach, uh, everybody knows about this. And then last but not least, uh, it's really very much, and this is very much uh, uh, highlighted in the series, it's really about uh, uh, supporting innovative actions and to take a comprehensive and systemic approach in addressing the whole range of issues around NCDs, not just about promotion, it's, it's also about palliative care, it's also about uh, uh, social determinants and the entire uh, uh, environment which are conducive to better address NCDs. Working at different levels, you mentioned this, Cameron, it's key. We also work at different levels using different aid modalities, bilateral, global, etc. Uh, so it's very much about people-centered primary health care, integrated care, life course approach, as you also mentioned. And, uh, and last but not least, it's, it's really about addressing NCDs determinants in a very cost-effective way by addressing at least two of them at the same time. And we really thank WHO and BMG for this reflection, and we are very convinced that this new evidence will uh, uh, allow us to push and to uh, bring uh, and to, to, uh, to make major advancement in the NCDs, uh, to move the NCDs agenda forward. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's really a great pleasure to work with you so closely. We have a very good collaboration with Erica for the preparation of general meeting of the Global Coordination Mechanism last year, and I hope we will continue this collaboration in the future. But before we will close it, uh, I want also to uh, say once again that you could find the link for the online articles of this BMG special edition, special collection. And I see some of the authors are here, Francesco, Benta, Thea, and others. So uh, I would like also to invite you after we will finish to have a group photo. Thank you very much, and have, have a productive week that, during the WHA.